walking with beasts. Sabertooth. Every Cenozoic animal. Smalodon populator. Now, there are some inaccuracies and in some well controversial theories. Like, for example, Smalodon living in social groups is a controversial theory at best. But all experts agree that lion pride idea is extremely unlikely since male and female Smalodon are not known to have had sexual dimorphism in sharp contrast to lions. Hmm, interesting. How can you tell the difference between a male and female saber tooth? You know, skulls. What are the sizes and shape? Where two <clears throat> Where two sexes are very differently built and because both sexes appear to have been active hunters. It is possible that their social structure was more like that of modern day wolves, with males and females providing a similar role in the pack order. If they were indeed social. And another thing, this episode relies on the now outdated hypothesis that North American carnivores like Smilodon outcompeted native South American carnivores, which is now an outdated hypothesis. Like terror birds, sporacidonts, and Macrorefractus, a carnivorous armadillo, which that should really stop because that is outdated. And also, they need to get with the times. In reality, all of these became extinct over one million years before carnivorans. Bearing procyonids, which were already present in the Miocene as bear-like omnivores. Arrived and Titanus at least coexisted with North American carnivores for two million years. Hmm, and you know, I never even thought it was an outdated hypothesis. Or maybe I did found out. What do you guys think? Forest Ruckus. Forest Ruckus lived in the Miocene 20 million to 13 million years ago, meaning it did not coexist with Smilodon. But there was a terrible turbo that was mentioned, and that is Titanus. And there is an accuracy. Forest Rockers 
probably did not have a claw wing as a wing claw. Just like the Cereamas, its closest living relatives. Yeah, where did the wing claw even come from? And it is unlikely that terror birds even have it. And it would have been probably stockier and had a shorter neck than it is is sh shown in the series. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, Smilodon was a bulky predator that was built to ambush and wrestle its prey on to the ground. And... And it's ill-equipped for high-speed chase. And... Quick... Quick... And it cannot make sharp turns like modern big cats do. If a prey animal makes a sharp turn, then a Smilodon would fall. And... Macrokinia, which there's an accuracy. It has a long proboscis snout trunk. Macrokinia probably had a shorter trunk than what is shown in the film. It would most likely either had a trunk like those of Sega antelope or not had a trunk at all, but rather a moose-like snout. Dodecurus. Megatherium, or giant ground sloth. And here's an interesting one. There is no evidence that Megatherium ate carrion to supplement its diet. It was back then that it was a herbivore, but it is far from impossible as herbivores today have been recorded eating meat. And some paleontologists do believe Megatherium was partly carnivorous, though that carnivory claim has little fundament to it. Given carbon isotopes analysis strongly suggests Megatherium was obligated herbivore. That said, it's not impossible Meat eating was a very occasional behavior to gain extra nutrients in their diet, as observed in other herbivores. There are other examples like deer eating meat occasionally. Including in modern day sloths. To corroborate this idea, a study from 2021 has found evidence for omnivory in Melodon, another type of ground sloth. So it's possible that Megalodon ate meat on occasion too. <laughs> Mystery of whether ground sloths ate meat occasion has been solved. Or is it? And this animal, it was cut and replaced with a juvenile macrocania. 
and this animal was most likely Hippidion, a prehistoric horse, but the model is used of Popeitherium. But it did appear in a book, so yeah. Thank you for watching. See you later, guys.